Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. As the saying goes, dogs are man's best friend. With these good boys and gals being the first animals to be fully domesticated by modern humans. However, our furry companions represent just one species within the diverse carnivoran family Canidae, which contains an array of sometimes very divergent looking animals, ranging from the tiny, mostly insectivorous Venek fox, to the larger hypercarnivorous forms, such as the African painted dogs and the grey wolf. Canids represent the most basal living caniform carnivorans, having diverged from the common ancestors of ursids, pinnipeds and mustaloids during the late Eocene, about 43 million years ago. Evolving in North America, the earliest dogs would have looked quite different from their modern relatives, with genera such as Hesperocyon being rather small, possessing elongated slender bodies, long heavy tails and relatively short weak limbs. It would probably have looked a bit like a terrestrially adapted raccoon or civet, having five toed feet, one of which formed a deeply set dew claw that suggests tree climbing capabilities. Still, the chief features which identify it as a canid include the loss of the upper third molar, which was part of a trend towards a more shearing bite, and the structure of the middle ear, which has an enlarged bulla. While still certainly not a fast running animal, its limbs were longer than those of other caniform carnivorans of the time, while also having parallel and closely touching toes, which differ markedly from the splayed arrangement of the digits seen in bears and procyonids. After this point, canids diverged into three major subfamilies, with these being the basal Hesperocyonines, the successful Borophagines, which are most famous for their largest and most impressive genera, such as the bone-crushing Episcyon, but were actually highly diverse, and, last but not least, the canines, being the only group to survive into modern times. I've already done a video on the Hesperocyonians and Borophagines, so now I'll be covering the early evolution of the so-called true canines. This subfamily first appeared during the Oligocene, roughly 35 million years ago in North America, where members of the canid family would stay until circa 7 million years ago during the late Miocene. While the Borophagians quickly became the top dogs of the Oligocene and much of the Miocene, the canines stayed relatively small and modest in size, being differentiated by their relatively longer and more slender limbs. The oldest representative was the incredibly successful and long-lived Leptocyon, which was a lightly built fox-like genus that produced up to four species and thrived for an astonishing 20 million years. The jaws and teeth were well suited for snatching small, fast-moving prey, although the genus would have still been an omnivore, probably consuming fruit and some invertebrates as well. All species of Leptocyon were small, with most weighing about 2 kilograms or 4.4 pounds on average, although L. delicatus from the late Oligocene and early Miocene was the smallest canid to ever live, perhaps weighing as little as 400 grams, which is comparable to a large modern stoat. In life, this probably adorable little canine hunted rodents and lagomorphs, resembling a cross between a fox and a weasel. Interestingly, Leptocyon persisted until about 10.3 million years ago, which is around the time when it is thought that the common ancestor of all living canids emerged, with all modern canines probably evolving from Leptocyon. Although producing slightly different results, genetic testing has placed the origin of all living forms between 11.9 and 10 million years ago, with the first genus to branch off being Urocyon, which contains the North American grey fox and island fox. Once thought to be a member of the clade Volpini, the so-called true foxes, genomic testing in the 1990s and 2000s revealed that Urocyon was instead the most basal of all modern canids. Along with the South American Lycolopex species that are also referred to as foxes but aren't, this has revealed that what people call foxes are just small canids with superficially similar appearances that have evolved independently. Regardless, the common ancestor of all canines was probably quite similar to the Holocene grey fox, Urocyon scenario argentius, with distinctive greyish fur with reddish highlights on the face, chest and legs. This modestly sized canid measures roughly 1 meter or about 3 feet long on average and typically weighs between 3.6 and 7 kilograms, though exceptionally large individuals may weigh as much as 9 kilograms or 20 pounds. 
it can be differentiated from the so-called true foxes of the genus Volpes by its possession of oval-shaped pupils instead of vertical slit-like ones, as well as its ability to climb trees, which seems to be a basal canine trait. Preferring wooded habitats, the grey fox has a very large range spanning from southern Canada to Venezuela and Colombia, and from the Pacific coastline of the United States to Quebec. A largely nocturnal and crepuscular animal, the grey fox is an adaptable omnivore and feeds on a wide variety of small vertebrates, including rodents and lagomorphs, while also consuming invertebrates and fruit. It was once the most common fox in the eastern United States, and though still found there, human advancement and deforestation allowed the red fox to become the dominant fox-like canid. Despite this post-colonial competition, the grey fox has been able to thrive in urban and suburban environments alongside humans. This species first appears in the fossil record during the mid-Pliocene about 3.6 million years ago in Arizona, with the insular dwarf species Urocyon littoralis developing on about 7,300 years ago, probably reaching six of the eight islands due to human influence. The island foxes are generally docile, show little fear of humans, and are easily tamed, indicating that the species was domesticated by local indigenous people. Island foxes are very similar to their mainland cousins, and are about 25% smaller as an adaptation to their insular environment. Despite previously being threatened due to introduced species, new diseases brought over from the mainland, and predation by golden eagles, island fox numbers are now thankfully either rising or stable due to conservation efforts. After the ancestors of Urocyon split off over 10 million years ago, two other major lineages of canines appeared, with these being the fox line Volpini species and the wolf line Canini. There is so much to say about the latter clade that they deserve a full video in their own right. So the remainder of this episode will be focusing on the Volpini. This very successful lineage probably first appeared around 10 million years ago, a time in the late Miocene that witnessed a notable diversification of canines in opposition to the Borophagines, which were declining in diversity. All members of Volpini are relatively modest in size, with the clade having been recovered thanks to genetic testing. The most basal living member is the genus Otocyon megalotis, the bat-eared fox of southern and eastern Africa. This relatively small and very distinctive looking canid, weighing between 3 and 5 kilograms, or 6.6 .6 to 11.7 pounds, is also highly specialised, with a diet composed almost entirely of harvested termites which also hydrates the animal, as it does not need to drink from freestanding water. As an adaptation for this unique diet, Otocyon possesses notably smaller teeth than other canids, with the molars being flatter and better suited for crushing the shells of its insect prey. When termites are unavailable, the bat-eared fox will consume a variety of other small animals, as well as fruit, seeds and fungi. The distinctive massive ears of this species are utilised to locate prey, as well as providing the ability to distribute heat in a tropical environment. Otocyon has a very poor fossil record, but the close relative, Prototocyon, is known from the late Pliocene and early Pleistocene of India and Tanzania. Molecular dating has found that the ancestors of Otocyon probably diverged about 9 million years ago. Another basal member of Volpini is the East Asian raccoon dog, the genus Nycteriutes, also known by its Japanese name of Tanuki. This stocky, somewhat rotund-looking canine possesses comparatively small, sturdy, rounded skulls, with reduced weak canines and carnassials, flat molars, and relatively long intestines. These are all adaptations for a highly omnivorous diet, feeding on almost anything considered edible, and are able to thrive in urban areas alongside humans. Weighing up to 10 kilograms, or 22 pounds, although most individuals are much lighter than this, Raccoon dogs tend to look larger than they actually are, due to their distinctive fluffy brown coats. Like the grey fox, this genus is a capable climber, and can often be seen sitting in tree branches while resting and searching for berries. There are two living species, N. procyonoides, which is native to China, eastern Russia, Mongolia, the Korean Peninsula and Vietnam, while N. viverinus is endemic to Japan, and is a bit smaller than the mainland species. Nycteriutes is thought to have diverged from other members of Volpini about 7 million years ago, 
Although the oldest fossil species are known from northern China circa 5.5 million years ago, the genus was one of the first truly successful canids to radiate across Eurasia and Africa, with seven recognised extinct species found from Spain to Morocco and Ethiopia, probably living in forested ecosystems like its modern relatives. However, during the Middle Pleistocene, the genus began to decline, disappearing from Europe and Africa probably as a result of rapid climatic changes reducing suitable habitats for them. It may have additionally been related to the late Miocene Metalopex and the Pliocene Ferrocyon, both from North America, which suggests that Volpini first evolved there before crossing the Bering Land Bridge into Eurasia. While Nycteriutes was once highly widespread and speciose, but has since declined, the most successful living vulpine genus is the famous Volpes. These are the 12 or so living species that dwell across a truly enormous range, encompassing almost the entirety of Africa, Eurasia and North America. Volpes first appears in the fossil record circa 7 million years ago during the late Miocene, with forms like the North American V. stenonathus from Oregon and the contemporary African V. rifati, native to Chad and one of the oldest known canids to be found outside North America. Members of Vulpes can be distinguished from the wolf line canids by their overall smaller size, bushier tails and flatter skulls. They have black triangular markings between their eyes and their nose, and the tip of their tail is often a different colour from the rest of their pelt. Most of the many modern species have very fragmentary fossil remains, with phylogenetic studies revealing that the most basal forms are the Fennec fox and its sister taxon, the Blanford's fox. Vulpes zerda, the Fennec fox, is the smallest Holocene canine, and is famous for its tiny size and adorable appearance, weighing between 1 and 2 kilograms, with its sandy coloured fur and enormous ears being adaptations for living in harsh desert environments of the Sahara in North Africa. Quite social and nocturnal animals, Fennec foxes target a variety of small desert-dwelling prey, feeding on insects, lizards, rodents and eggs. Its close relative, Blanford's fox, is another desert-adapted species, inhabiting a rather discontinuous range across the Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, Iraq, Iran and Central Asia. It looks quite similar to the Fennec fox, but is slightly larger and with less exaggerated features, having a diet that is largely frugivorous and possessing sharp curved claws and naked foot pads that help the fox climb up rocky cliffs and ledges. Other basal species include the pale fox, Volpes pallida, which is native to the arid landscapes of the Sahel, with a range that stretches across Central Africa. One of the least studied fox species, this animal can be very difficult to spot due to its sandy coloured coat and stealthy hunting behaviour. Meanwhile, the only member of Volpes to be found south of the Sahel is the Cape Fox, V. Charmer, another small arid adapted form native to South Africa, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Lesotho and Namibia. A true opportunist, this shy nocturnal fox will eat almost anything edible, from fruit to insects and small mammals to carrion. Its skull is very similar to another Volpe species, the Bengal fox V. bengalensis, which is present across the Indian subcontinent, although this may be an example of convergence. Other forms, such as the Arctic fox, are specialised carnivores, given the incredibly harsh and cold tundra conditions in which they live, with thick fluffy fur that changes from brownish grey in summer to snow white in winter. This species feeds on lemmings, voles, bird eggs and carrion. The arctic fox appears to have evolved from Volpes chuhudingi, a fossil species that was native to the Tibetan plateau during the Pliocene, and was also a more specialised carnivore than most other true foxes. Today, a different species is found on the roof of the world, with this being the also highly carnivorous Tibetan sand fox, possessing a very distinctive appearance with a long muzzle, concave forehead, and canine teeth much larger than those of other Volpe species. The fox's diet is composed primarily of plateau pikers, as well as rodents and rabbits. However, the most successful of all of these species is the red fox, Volpes volpes, possessing an enormous range, stretching from Iberia to the southern United States, living across almost the entirety of Eurasia, Canada, and most of the United States, outside the arid southwest. It is also native to the coastal regions of North Africa, with a distinctive reddish coat, 
this highly opportunistic animal is the largest Volpes species. As some of the more northerly subspecies can reach weights of 14 kilograms or 30 pounds. However, overall size and mass ranges wildly depending on the region, with most of the many, many subspecies being notably smaller than this. It is more carnivorous than its closest living relatives, such as Rupel's fox and the Corsac fox, with the earliest fossil individuals from the Pleistocene being notably smaller and more generalized than modern Volpes Volpes, capable of eating almost anything. The red fox is famous for its ability to live alongside humans, and has a long-lasting, significant presence in a variety of cultures, where it is often portrayed as a mischievous, cunning trickster or thief. They are very agile, and often come into conflict with farmers, as the foxes sometimes raid their chicken coops or kill young lambs, although this is notably rarer than often portrayed in media. Unfortunately, the red fox was introduced to Australia during the 19th century, and has proven to be a major pest, decimating populations of endemic marsupials. Like the other basal canids, these foxes are notably more lightly built than similarly sized members of Canini, the wolf line group, and closer in appearance and lifestyle to Leptocyon, the ancestral canine. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will pick up where this one left off, examining the evolution of Canini, which includes the jackals, African painted dogs, dolls, and the diverse members of the genus Canis. See you again soon. Cheerio.